Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. And warning, XRP is about to explode. It is time for us to uh, to acquire our life-changing wealth. So says one analyst. Now, I'm going to share with you opinions from all sorts of analysts in this video. And I do want to be clear that I don't have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice. So do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I, I say or write. Definitely not offering financial advice here. And um, I, I just, to be clear, and there's, I, I know I have to say this every video and it's probably annoying to some people, but it's the right thing to do because uh, I don't want anyone to think that I'm someone or something that I'm not, but I'm just an enthusiastic member of the XRP community. And uh, I like to talk about this stuff, engage with others in the community and make YouTube videos. So that is all that it is. It's my most favoritist hobby ever. But uh, before we go any further, if you would please ever so delicately tap that like button, I would definitely appreciate the support. And also, if you are a fan of Ripple and XRP, you done came to the right spot, son. Go ahead and subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel. No cost, none, damn it. All right, so we've got XRP at 24.2 cents as I record this. Bitcoin is at $10,384, uh, $10, rather. Uh, market cap for the asset class. 334 billion and Bitcoin dominance at 57.4 cents. You know, I think it'll be fun to come back to like a video like this, like five years and see that I'm scrolling up and down on the screen right now. And these really are the prices, but these prices are going to look like ridiculously low. I suspect in the future, just like when I see um, YouTubers that were like putting videos out showing coin market cap, like five or six years ago, I'm like, Oh man, XRP at half a penny, ah! <laughs> that is what I want to give me more. Oh, if I only knew, if I were only fortunate enough to know that XRP and crypto existed back then. Unfortunately, I was not and didn't join the party, uh, you know, the world of crypto until late 2017. But even still, there are people that would take advantage of this if they knew about it today, but they still don't. There's This is a very small thing. This is very niche. It, it, this is, a, I'd say we're a pretty tight-knit community here, here, you know, the XRP community, but... Uh, there are only so many of us. There are only about 2.1 million activated uh, XRP wallets. And so it's it's small. Well, think about that. Out of like, what, over 7 billion people on the planet, I think. It's something like that. It's not very big. And so um, I was listening to, I watched a, a couple videos, actually. There was one from a Blockchain Backer put out a little bit earlier today. And he shared the same opinion as DIY investing, primarily anyway. And so Blockchain Backer, he was talking about how maybe XRP goes down to like 22 and a half cents. But as far as like 18 cent or 15 cent or 13 cent, 11 cent XRP, uh, he, he doesn't think that's in the cards. He thinks that pretty much the, the bottom is in. in, in um, and... And he was talking about it in, in really short order, actually. And this is another thing that was actually the same as, as in part to what um, DIY Investing said. But Blockchain Backer was talking about it. He suspects more likely than not that you're going to be talking about 50 cent XRP at a minimum like, sooner than later, perhaps on this next leg up even. So that was kind of fascinating to see. And that's why for me, like even though I'm not a chart analyst and I'm not going to pretend to know how to read a chart and I'm not interested in learning, I, I like researching fundamentals more. That's what lights my fire for whatever reason. But uh, it's it's interesting to hear perspectives from analysts that do know how to read charts, and uh, and it was interesting. It's interesting to find when there's crossover uh, in terms of uh, it, it, like opinions that these these people are, are coming to independently, and if there's crossover, to me that's always fascinating. And so um, there was this tweet from DIY Investing who wrote, "Warning: XRP is going to explode," while most are doubting. We are accumulating life-changing wealth. The next move is going to be huge. Do not miss out on this. You can see he is a rather bullish indeed. And so he, he's been talking in the videos a lot lately, frankly, about um, this is concept that there are these people that, uh, you know, they've embarrassed. Maybe they're selling on the way down and you know, hoping to, to buy back in cheaper. Uh he doesn't really seem to think at all this is going to happen. He says that we have, he's, he's standing by it and uh, more power to him. I respect his boldness, but he's, he seems very firm on just this idea that, uh, you know, res XRP resistance has been flipped and it is now, uh, now support despite this recent drawdown, he still seems to be quite, uh, quite firm on that. And he was also talking about the, those types of levels, you know, 50 some plus that uh, we could be seen sooner than, than later. And, and so for me, like, um, and I've, I mentioned this publicly, I'm currently buying XRP on a daily basis. And 
man, if, if these guys are right, and you know, there's no way to technically know, obviously, and I get that. Um, this is if they're right, and this is like pretty much the last time to purchase XRP at these prices. Ah, man. I could be upset with myself in the future if I don't make even bigger moves soon <laughs> in terms of purchasing, if, if they end up being right. Because I keep hoping, and I, like, I don't pretend to know which way this is going to go in terms of price action, but, uh, man, if I, I, ho I hope they're wrong. I, I really hope that they're wrong. I don't, know, I don't know what they will be, but I hope just selfishly so that I could. Because I'm telling you, if it gets down to, like, 15 cents again, I'm going to do what I probably should have done back in March when it happened. I mean, and I did buy cheaper. Like, I did buy it 15 cents outside of my regular buying cycle. But I've just changed my outlook as of late in terms of, like, what my risk tolerances are. And my risk tolerance has increased dramatically. And, and the reason, I'll, I'll share with you in a nutshell, I only said it in, like, one other video ever. But it's that I, I just asked myself, I was like, so, like, what if I put it? And I'm not saying this is exactly what I'm doing. I just, just to get an idea, like, because I, I feel like I'm putting in, what, to me, what would be a, a lot of money. And so I just said to myself, okay, so what if you, what if, and again, I'm not saying this is what I'm doing, but what if I took, what if I put in like a year's worth of disposable income? So after all my ex life expenses are paid and, you know, I, I would always invest anyway, but uh, what if I just took it all and put it all into XRP and what if that went to zero? Would that be life changing? Even if it was like a year's worth of, of that disposable income, my answer to myself honestly was no. It would suck. I wouldn't like it. And that could happen. I recognize that this is highly risky. And then I asked myself, well, okay, but what if it goes the way I think it's going to go? Like, what if I do this and it, and it even just goes back to, um, you know, XRP gets back to its all-time high one day, would that be life-changing? And my answer to that was yes. And so I'm taking a calculated risk and I'm not telling you how much I'm, I'm putting in. And to some people, it wouldn't be that much. To others, it would be a lot. And so uh, I say that to be rather vague intentionally because I'm never going to say how much XRP I hold. But that's kind of where I'm coming at it from. And in terms of actual adoption, I just... It's here. Like, it's, XRP's already functioning, getting used. I just don't care about the, the short-term price action in terms of, like, emotionally responding. I refuse to play that damn game. Uh, and that's why I'm not worried about time in the bottom. I don't care. If, if XRP goes down to $0.11 cents again, or even lower than that, and I bought in, you know, in the $0.20 cent region or $0.30, cent, which is mostly where all my purchases have been, I don't care. I'm not going to be stressing because I know that I can't predict that. I'm not going to be hard on myself. I'm not worried about timing the markets. I'm just I'm just concerned about how much XRP I have in total. So that's what I'm actually looking at here. But this would be interesting too. I wanted to highlight this piece from Bitcoinist.com, which is titled, A Bearish Reversal in Stock Market May Bleed Bitcoin, Says Analyst. And I've been thinking about this, this concept because... Even if, like, for instance, you know, blockchain backer and, and DIY investing um, end up being correct, like, what if they has, it's a perfectly awesome, reasonable analysis that they have? But what if the stock market crashes? Because we saw that crypto followed the stock market when it crashed in uh, in May of this year, which which is what brought XRP down to 11 cents. So what if that doesn't, like, what... I, I haven't seen them talk about that. Maybe I just, I, maybe they did and I just missed it. But it makes me wonder, like, what what would they think about that? Because in the past we have seen what what crypto does in these times, like these tumultuous times. Even though tumultuous times, even though crypto is supposed to be in theory a hedge against that type of you know activity, uh, what would it actually do? Because if this happens, and there are a lot of analysts that are saying, you know, stock market might not be looking so hot, it makes me wonder if I do hold out and then put in more money. Then if that happens. Uh, I just I wonder if it would occur. I, again, I'm not pretending to know. It's just an interesting thing to think through. But a uh, piece begins as follows: Bitcoin remains at the risk of losing a part of its yearly gains on a negative stock market sentiment, according to Kevin Vincent. The chart analyst highlighted the S&P 500's three-day route this week, adding that if it becomes a confirmed reversal, then it would take Bitcoin and the rest of the cryptocurrency market lower in tandem. He reasoned his bearish analogy with a so-called correlation between Bitcoin and the S&P 500. And there's a tweet on the screen indicating as much. And again, if this happens, I will not be participating in a sell-off. I will just be patient and know that this is how humans behave. And if this happens, I will then just purchase more XRP. There we go. That's what I decided I want to do. And I'm not worried about timing the bottom. I just don't care. I'm not going to put that kind of pressure on myself. So when I buy this, and inevitably it goes down in the short to midterm, so what? I don't care. I'm, not, I, I'm sleeping easy because I know how much XRP I have. I'm sleeping easy. Let me assure you of that. I don't care what it goes down to in the short to midterm in terms of um, you know price relative to the United States dollar. Anyway, but uh, the benchmark cryptocurrency and U.S. index traded almost uh, synchronously 
after crashing lower during the March 2020 route. The Federal Reserve's infinite bond-buying package, coupled with near-zero interest rates and government spending, reduced the appeal of cash and U.S. Treasuries that were then returning zero to little yields. As a result, bids for riskier assets like stocks and Bitcoin surged. BTC slash USD at one point surged by almost 235% from its mid-March uh, nadir, nadir, I don't know what that word is. Uh, I, I feel like I have a pretty good vocabulary, but what is that word? Maybe I've heard it enunciated. I know it is N-A-D-I-R. I'm not sure. Uh, nadir, nadir, not, what was that matter? Uh, whatever. Of $3,858. Um, that data comes from Coinbase. The S&P 500 at the same time climbed by as much as 63%. So interesting food for thought. We'll see where all this goes, but uh, definitely from the analysts that I'm seeing, uh, many of them think that the bottom is actually in. And that's not um, a universally held opinion necessarily, but uh, it's fun to see who's right and who's wrong, right? It's just fun to track this stuff. And, and even when analysts get it wrong, it's not like I'm going to be like, uh, go away. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'd say to him, but like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to like burn them at the stake. Like I understand that there's no way every trader is going to get every single call they make right ever. Like that's just, that's just not humanly possible. So, but even so, that's what I was saying. It's just kind of like fun to track and see what happens here. Uh, I'd love to hear what you think, but uh, I could not be more optimistic for the future, and there are 11 billion reasons why that is true. But that's it for this one. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.